Today we have Rosemary Morrison and Dan Doomshaw from Tightrope Theater. I'm going to introduce them individually first. Rosemary Morrison is the Improv for Wellness Coordinator at Tightrope Theater. She is a performer, creator, and arts administrator working and living in Vancouver on unceded Coast Salish territories. Rosemary is a student at the Simon Fraser University pursuing a BFA in theater performance and a minor in gender, sexuality, and women's studies. She loves being a part of the Tightrope team and working to share all of the benefits of learning improv. We also have Dan Doomsha. He is the Director of Improv for Work and Wellness at Tightrope Theater, a graduate of Queen's University Drama with a BAH, an Artist in Community Education, a BED. Dan has been performing and teaching theater and improv for over 20 years, so he started after kindergarten. Understanding his background as a high school teacher and corporate trainer, Dan loves to apply the concepts of improv as the way teams work together. Dan has been training professionals and applied improv in, excuse me, in implied improv for the workplace in, since 2014. Dan serves as the president of the Queer Improv Society of Vancouver, where he builds community through improv, guiding the nonprofit board, directors, and a troop of over 40 members. Dan is also a leadership communications consultant with the Humphrey Group and continues to deliver leadership training and executive coaching across the globe to Fortune 500 companies, governments, professional associations, First Nations councils, and with universities, including UBC, Sauter Executive Education Programs. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. It's nice to get the official intro, wow. <laughs> Your moms would be angry with me if I didn't introduce you officially. <laughs> Thank no, you. We sound, we sound so important, but you know what? We put on our pants one leg at a time. And of course, we're on Zoom, so we put on our track pants one leg at a time. <laughs> yes. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you could join us today. We see a lot of familiar faces here. Some of our, our performers are here. We just had Susan uh, in a show with us. We've got Clara from our Improv for Parkinson's Troop as well. She's a, a teacher for, with our Improv for Parkinson's program. I see Robert Cochran is here. He's our our colleague leading improv uh, in the States, out of Nevada, I think. California now. Yes, California. <laughs> so we've, the whole gang's all here, and uh, we've got an hour of, of real fun in store for you. So um, your participation today is up to you. You know, you can sit back and watch and listen and enjoy, uh, or you can get involved. We have some opportunities to jump in and try some of our exercises today. So you'll have agency over uh, how much you participate, but we'll talk about what our goals are for today. And I'll, I'll turn it to Rosemary to introduce our program. Great. I'm going to start up a little slideshow here. Here we are. Let's go back to the start. A slideshow and here we are this is our little our little brain who you will see on most of our programs who we've grown to love so much um we'll start with this quote from michael j fox i think the scariest person in the world is the person with no sense of humor we love to start off our our taster sessions with this quote um and then let's talk about why improv for Parkinson's. Why do we even do improv for Parkinson's? Um, Dan, we can share this one, but as, as it says here, learning improv can help people with Parkinson's with their symptoms, uh, mental well-being, and quality of life. So we take all of the skills of improv week by week, we uh, approach with a different skill and we apply that improv skill, such as acceptance or collaboration, and we apply that to life as well. Yeah, improv is all about sharing control and dealing with the unexpected, having grace under fire. And we know that Parkinson's is a very unpredictable disease. Sometimes your medications will be on sometimes they'll be off you have good days and bad days and i'm sure you could all agree that your life is not unfolding as you planned it and that's what improv is all about it's about having a plan and, and then being adaptable letting uh letting the curveballs come and then rolling with them 
that's not a metaphor that makes sense. And Robert's probably going to be mad at that one because he's a real baseball fan. But, <laughs> uh, but that that's why we have improv for Parkinson's. And my partner is a movement disorder neurologist. And his big request for our, our program around improv for Parkinson's was to help his patients cope, help them cope with the unpredictability of PD, help them cope with uh, life with this new diagnosis and create a creative outlet where people can connect, have a community and laugh. So that's why we do improv for Parkinson's. Is our plan for today? Um, Dan talked a little bit about the history there. We'll talk We'll talk more about that. And then we'll, of course, as Dan said earlier, we'll try some improv. We'll give you a couple of our taster games and you can participate to your heart's content. Whatever you're feeling up to is great. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions after. Here is our, what is improv? We can talk about the flow of the course a little bit. Um, we do a six week, so our, our first course in Improper Parkinson's, we do a level one course. We run it for six weeks. So you can see all of the themes here. And these are different improv skills. Week one, we have presence and acceptance. Week two, we have listening. Week three is spontaneity and celebrating mistakes. I love that week. Week four is teamwork and collaboration. Week five is clear, strong offers and specificity. And week six is like the celebratory week where you bring games back, you put it all together. And um, with this six week program, we try to ideally equip our students with these tools. But of course, some people get bit with the improv bug. And so now we have a level two and we have a group that performs regularly. Um, and if you wanted to see some performances, we'll also have updates on those. Our last one uh, was a film noir special. Our PD performance troupe did a film noir showcase. And that was a lot of fun, but that's uh, that's after this level one. So, yeah. Do you notice these themes for each week? They all reflect one of the improv skills that will help you navigate life and symptoms of PD. So when we start off with presence and acceptance, this is really taking that improv philosophy of yes and, and applying it to your new life with your diagnosis. Yes, I have PD and I have agency over how I respond to that. So with these six weeks, we explore these themes and I'll invite Clara to talk about this next here. I'll give you a little heads up, Clara, because she just was um, our teacher for this Improv for Parkinson's Level 1 course. Uh, with these six weeks, we equip you with the mindset that improv uh, offers to us. You know, how can I accept and how can I build um, with unpredictability? And after those six weeks, you might be good. You might take that Im improv mindset and say, great, you know, I can bring this back to my other activities and into my life. And then like Rosemary said, if you get bit by the bug, then <laughs> you may want to show up to Robert's uh, Yes and Exercise weekly drop-in classes. You might want to take more of our classes, but we wanted to design something that allowed people to get through a program and then decide if they wanted to continue or not. So in those six weeks, you might just take that program and say, that was great. Now I have a different way to look at things. So I'll just turn it to Clara to talk about, um, Clara, what was your experience leading a group through those six weeks and the benefits that it has? Because in our classes, we always have one of our PD performance troop members with PD or a PD-like um, diagnosis to help lead the class and make those connections between Here's the improv skill, and here's how it applies to life with Parkinson's. Clara? Ask you to unmute there. And we always celebrate mistakes. So, oh, she can't unmute. We might need to make yeah. the permissions there. <laughs> we can't hear you. Oh, okay. So, Kelly has also put in the chat oh, there. Oh, can you hear me now? She's here. Can She's with yes. us. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. So one thing we always do is we celebrate mistakes. So whenever on Zoom someone starts talking without unmuting, we go, hey. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well, thank I love, you. I love, I love this like impromptu, uh, hello, could you? 
<laughs> Hello. Oh. Anyways, what um, was the course? So, what was the so course I, like, and what did people get out? The, the course was great, and I, I was the assistant teacher, not the teacher, but the assistant teacher. And what I loved was I was able to impart some feelings that I had about what we were doing and how it impacts Parkinson's and vice versa. Um, what I've noticed with uh, doing this improv, you, you end up making a community, and it's a uh, it's a really safe place to laugh and giggle, which is really important because that produces dopamine in a different way. So that's kind of neat. But um, the yes and is is really important because, you know, we can think of all our things that, that bring, bring us down, but the yes and lifts us up because we're being positive about life. Um, and, you know, I have that in examples of, you know, writing a really mean email and then I kind of think, wait a second, how can I switch this around and make it a positive email to whoever I'm writing? And uh, so it kind, of, it kind of makes you think, you know, how your relationships are and how you can make them really positive. So I really enjoyed um, helping out in the uh, classes and uh, seeing, seeing, the, seeing you guys grow. It's, I can't tell you enough how much improv really works for people with, with Parkinson's. Your facial expression, your way you think, the way you feel, the community that you create. I can go on and on, but I think I better stop. <laughs> Thanks, Cara. We're so fortunate to have you on the team, Clara. It's great that you're here today and you're a great assistant teacher. So thanks for sharing that. It's great. Do it. You'll have so much fun. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's great. Okay. Okay. Hmm? okay. Here we go. So here we go. Here's the plan for today. We're going to now try some improv and see what it's like. And like I said, you can... Uh, you can watch or you can participate. We always start with a nice warm up because when we get into collaboration and working with others, it's good to warm up so that you're really open and that you're able to make connections and you're able to um, be adaptable with your partner. So that starts with being available yourself. So I'll just in invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable. And we're gonna take three deep breaths. And I want you to focus on where you are in the room. Are you seated on a chair? Are you on a sofa? Just try to become present with these three breaths. And let's breathe all together. Take a deep breath in. And let it out. And take two more in your own time. Great. We're going to do a body scan, and I'd like you to send your breath to these parts of your body. Maybe wiggle them or just be aware of them. If there's any tension, or if you're holding any tension or energy or pain, see if you can let it out on that exhale. So inhale, think of your feet and your toes. Maybe you could tap your toes or wiggle them and let it out. Think of your ankles, your calves and your shins. Let it out. Think of your knees. Think of your hips. Think of your thighs and your hamstrings. Think of your butt and let it out. Let out all that tension. See if you can relax. Think of your waist. Think of your belly and your low back. Think of your rib cage. Think of your shoulders. And a nice big breath in, expanding your rib cage and your shoulders. Think of your heart and your chest. Think of your upper arms and your elbows, your forearms and your wrists. Think of your hands and your fingers. Think of your neck holding up your head, maybe gently move it left and right. Think of your scalp and now think of your face. Think of your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyes, your nose, your cheeks, your chin, your lips, and your tongue. And now your whole body, imagine breathing in nice blue, calm, warm, uh, calming energy. And breathe out any kind of red tension or stress or fear. 
Great. So that's our body warm up. Now we're going to do an imagination warm up. I'm going to say a couple words and I want you to, if you're on mute, you can say them out loud. If you're not muted, you can just do them in your head. Just think of words that come to mind when I say my word. So I'm going to say a word and then you respond with a word and see if you can get spontaneous. Don't judge your first impulse. Just let it flow. Don't try to think of the right answer. Just think of the first answer that comes up, this idea that you are reacting to the suggestion. Okay, so here we go. Passport. Ice cream. Photo. Deodorant. Comic book. Bridal veil. Shawl, leaf, great. Okay, now reflect on, were you able to spontaneously say a word? Did it go too fast for you? In our classes, we talk about the speed of fun. And sometimes we need to speed up the speed of fun and that makes it more fun. And sometimes we need to slow down that speed of fun. And it will depend on you and your partner to really get that connection. Some days are slower than other days. So we need to dial down that speed of fun. And some days you're, you're peppy. And we can turn up that speed of fun. Also, I want you to observe, did your inner critic come out of the office in your brain? Were you saying to yourself, well, that wasn't a good answer? or I could have said something different, or I just keep saying the opposite. We like to judge and evaluate our performance. And improv is about free response, following that impulse and not judging. So, so the judge is an important role in our minds, but we have to be able to know when to put that inner critic in the office and say, I don't need you just yet. And that freedom to be able to create without judgment leads to great innovation and often leads to hilarious outcomes because people aren't being too careful about what they say. They're focusing on inspiring their partner and responding to what they hear. Okay, so we are warmed up now. We've warmed up our body. We've warmed up our, our mind and our spontaneity. Let's get into our first exercise. Rosemary, what's the first one that we have right. planned? Is the Our first wheel? exercise is the emotional wheel, yeah. Okay. So we know that with Parkinson's, emotions can seem smaller because of masking and because of volume. So one thing that we do before our classes is we practice reactions and we practice emotions. And Zoom is so useful for this because you can often see yourself. So you can see what happy looks like. Oftentimes we'll feel happy, but because of our symptoms, it doesn't look like we're happy. So this is a great way to calibrate what you're showing and what you're feeling. Also, the useful thing about this exercise is that we get a neutral, we get like a blank canvas. And it's very helpful to be able to go to a neutral state of emotion because it's tough when you're upset about something and someone says, just be happy. It's like, that's a big jump, isn't it? Right? Actually, I'm upset. I'm not going to be happy. But it's more attainable to be able to go to neutral. To say, okay, can I let this anger go? Or can I let this upset go? And just go to a blank canvas. So I want you to practice that now. See if you can take a breath and imagine your emotional state like a blank canvas. Let go of anything that you're feeling right now and see if you can come to a state of just no emotion, ready to paint on an emotion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin this wheel of emotions here. Got this little wheel. It's going to land on an emotion. And I'd like you to see if you can develop that feeling of that emotion. Then show it on your face. Then look around at the gallery view here here on Zoom and see, you can see what other people are doing. All right, here we go. Start out with neutral and, ooh, loving, 
loving is the first emotion. So think of loving, something you love, someone you love. Show that on your face. Look at yourself and look around. All that love. I see Sheila's got a nice pooch there. That makes me think of love too. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Come back to neutral. Let it go. And sometimes uh, the dogs are a good inspiration for this. When my dog gets all in a fight with another dog and then walks away, just shakes off. And then he's done with it. <laughs> so you can shake off the emotion like a dog if you want. Okay, here's the next one. We're spinning the wheel and we've got needy, needy. Oh, think of needy. We need something. How does that look? Look on your face. Look on others. Nice. Great. Okay. And now shake that one off. Okay. Come back to neutral. Going to no emotion at all. And now we've got nostalgic. Nostalgic. Thinking about times gone by. Maybe about past holidays. Mm, twinkle in your eye. Take a look at yourself. Oh, I see some people are kind of swaying their shoulders. That's an interesting thing for nostalgic. And take a look at others. Great. Let that go. Okay. I'm going to do a couple more spins of the wheel here. Here's one. Oh, sensual. Sensual. Okay. So I'll think about what, what's sensual. It might be a hot bath. It might be a romantic card from someone. Oh, sensual. It might be an amazing piece of chocolate cake. Ooh, think about sensual. How does that look? Look at yourself. Look at everybody else. <laughs> I have to stop this one before it gets too hot and heavy. Okay, let's go back to neutral. Oh, okay, and we'll do one more here. Okay, here we go. We did nostalgic already. I have to give it another spin. Oh, here's a good one. Happy. All right. Think of something that makes you happy. Maybe it's a plan about to happen. And maybe it's seeing someone. Maybe it's a favorite, favorite show on TV or favorite food. Take a look at yourselves. Take a look at everyone else on here. Oh, it makes me happy seeing all this happiness. Great. Okay, and shake it off. <sighs> Back to neutral. This is great. This is the work that actors do. We take on emotions that we aren't necessarily feeling, but we use our authentic way to feel these emotions to create scenes and to create collaboration with others. So now we've warmed up our bodies, warmed up our imaginations, and we've done this first exercise called the emotional wheel or emotional states. Over to you, Rosemary. That's great. Okay, let's uh, go on to our next game, which is sort of like the, the next step for, from the emotional wheel. Um, this is a game called Angry Baker, uh, which I love. So we might still want to use that emotional wheel, Dan, or we could get some suggestions in the chat. Um, why don't we do a little demo first? So first thing I'll need is, um, you can put your suggestions in the chat. I would love an occupation, some kind of job, and an emotion. You can just put anything in there and I'll pick two for Dan. A teacher, love it. Oh, <laughs> angry teacher. I think Dan might know this one personally. That's so great. So I'm going to give Dan angry teacher. And Dan is just going to give us one line. It doesn't have to be, it's, again, that first thought. You don't have to judge it. But it's something that an angry teacher might say. So Dan, angry teacher. All right, students, stop talking. I'm trying to take attendance. <laughs> oh. Ah, that one's personal. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> um, so we'll just do a couple of those. I think it would be fun maybe to do a couple where everybody's on mute and you can just do one for yourself and then we can maybe get a couple of volunteers to try it out. 
Um, we already have a suggestion there. That's great. So on mute, just to yourself, what is one line that a sad social worker might say? Oh, so good. I love seeing these faces. Okay. I'd love to hear some of those. How about uh, how about we get um one person if you're willing to participate a volunteer and I'll give you a new one to give it a try. You can put your hand up or not, so it's okay. I would say as, as the Eden. sad social worker, I'm like, I told you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yes. That's great. Oh, here we go again. Here we go again from Katie. Yes. I love that. Great. Why don't we do another one for everybody on mute? Uh, how about another occupation? Oh, you know what? I would love I would love uh, to hear a surprise dentist. A surprise dentist. So on your own, on mute. Uh-oh, from Susan. <laughs> oh, I've not seen that before. That's great. And I'm seeing a lot of surprised faces. Stacey, I was seeing a lot of hand action from you. <laughs> Something surprising is going on there. Oh, there's my watch from Robert. That is so great. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay, how about one more, Dan? Up for one more, let's do, hmm, I would love to hear, let's stick out the wrong tooth, that's <laughs> great. I would love to hear um, a competitive artist, competitive artist. All right. That's Who wants great. to share theirs? You can ra raise your hand, and then we'll 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 call you out. We'll call out your name, and you can unmute and share your competitive artists. <laughs> On the reactions tab, you can raise your hand like that, or you can actually in real life just raise your hand. Okay, uh, Robin, I'm going to ask you to unmute and share yours. Oh, I hear something good, but you're on mute. Are you able to unmute your? Oh, we might need microphone? to give you. Permission. We might need Eden's help for that. Dawn said she doesn't. My know paint is thicker than your paint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Anyone else want to share their competitive artist? Taking a look at all of all the folks on here. Oh, we have a couple in the chat. Susan's is, oh, he thinks he's all that with three exclamation marks. I love it. Uh, she doesn't know how to use the colors. Mm -hmm. Stacy, <laughs> oh, great, go ahead. Oh my God, you're not going to use that black. I have got that black in my painting. It's absolutely perfect this way. You cannot go past me. Yes, <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. That's so good. Um, oh, Clara, go for it. Um, my strokes are better than yours. <laughs> hey, that's great. Um, how about uh, there's not room enough on this canvas for the both of us? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing some of those. Those really great ones. That is awesome. And so that's our game, Angry Baker. Just a fun one. That's one you can play at home with your friends, your family, your care partners. It's a really great, simple one. You can just get an occupation and an emotion. A lot of fun. And uh, Dan, why don't we move on to our next one? This is uh, one of my faves, the Bat Friend game. Okay, and you'll notice that these games that we're playing are starting to build on the skills. 
right? We started out by just feeling the emotions and now we're incorporating those emotions into occupations and really starting to improvise, right? So what you just came up with, those little sayings, that was the start of a character. And we could actually put that character into a scene with another character and just like chemistry, see how they react. And that's when you really start getting the hilarity that happens because you see someone be really creative right? And you're free to be this character. Okay, so this next game is called the best friend game. And we're going to get some people to volunteer to uh, give us a demonstration of this game. In this game, we're going to see two best friends, and they might not even know each other before they demonstrate for us here. And they're going to recall a memory that they've had in their friendship. So uh, I might say to Rosemary, Rosemary, do you Remember that time we went on a biking wine tour together? Yes, 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 yes. We went, we biked all the way across the south of France over a whole month. Yes, 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 yes. And we didn't speak French. So half the time we didn't know what we were drinking. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And I remember we made one stop where they served us a particularly blue wine. Yes, 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 yes. And we got blue lips. And when we were driving our bikes away from the winery, uh, there was a policeman that stopped us. Yes, 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 yes. And the blue lips, little did we know, was the mark of a criminal they were looking for. But of course, we were innocent, so we had to try and convince this policeman that it wasn't us. Yes, 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 yes. And to convince him, we had to bring him back, back to the winery, and we <laughs> ended up convincing him to have a taste. So the policeman got blue lips. <laughs> yes, 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 that's right. And the policeman actually really loved that blue wine and ended up not only letting us go, but joining us for the rest of the biking wine tour. <laughs> <laughs> great okay so there's there's our example and you see what we did there to create the memory is every time we were going to respond to each other we started by saying yes five times we said yes 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 and that almost tricks your brain into thinking you have an idea right you're agreeing with the person saying oh yes 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 i remember that and then you add on something that complements to the idea we find that if you don't do that yes, 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 yes thing, there's a big long pause where you're thinking about what to say. But the yes, yes, yes thing just gets you right into agreeing with them and building on it. That's the yes and, and that we have in improv. So now that you've seen us demonstrate, can we get two volunteers that we're going to spotlight and they're going to play this game for us, the, the best friend game, and we'll see what memory that they come up with. Remember, there's no way to make a mistake here because this memory, it doesn't exist until about 30 seconds from now. <laughs> so put up your hand if you'd like to volunteer. Greg would like to volunteer. We got Greg, so we will spotlight Greg for everyone. And we need one more volunteer. Can I get someone to raise their hand? Susan is volunteering. Okay, so we will spotlight, add Susan in there to the spotlight. There we go. Gonna add Susan, I'll find Greg again. Okay. Perfect. Oh no, we keep replacing. Oh, can we add instead of replace? Here, yes. Add. There we go. Hey, we did it. Okay, great. Oh, and I just saw on the gallery, Alona is here. Alona is also one of our troop members from the performance troop. Hi, Alona. Okay, so let's have Susan go first. Susan, you'll say to Greg, do you remember when? And you can say an activity or a place or whatever, and then Greg is going to respond with five yeses, and you're going to build it together. Okay, everyone, let's give a big round of applause. And we like to use the sign language <laughs> applause on Zoom for our best friends. Here they go. Do you remember when we were in the Olympics team together? Yes, 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 yes. I had a hard time believing we were going to make the Olympics in the one-man rowing division. But we were able to finally make it until we got actually to the games and we found out that. Yes. 
Yes. Yes, yes, it was so much fun to be lost with you in Barcelona and and realizing we'd actually completely landed in the wrong city. The Olympics were being held in Paris that year. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I I couldn't believe that both of us got that wrong. We should have been in the city of love and all that kind of stuff. And there we are down in Barcelona. Then when you got the idea that to make us get to Paris, we should. Yes. Yes, yes. What choice did we have? We had to sell our row, rowing vessel because we could afford to get to Paris. And then, of course, when we got to Paris, we had this big problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. We forgot <clears throat> and we didn't have all of our ID with us. <laughs> So when people said, what are you trying to come into the country for? And we said, well, we're Olympians, we're scholars. And then they looked at us and said, well, where's your equipment? And we said, well, we just sold it in Barcelona. Uh, if I recall, you of the immigration people, and that's when... Yes. Yes, I remember now. I was looking in my basket and I found an artichoke and somehow it it just transformed the moment. They somehow saw us as real and authentic because I had this artichoke with me and and gave it to them and we were in. All right. We'll end it right there. Give them a round of applause. That was awesome. <laughs> Great job, Susan and Greg. So much courage doing that in front of everyone because they didn't know how it was going to go. They had no <laughs> idea. But did you see how they worked together? I love how Greg made these offers to Susan and then, you know, it's <laughs> right. you know yes, yes. And then we, we sold our rowing vessel. <laughs> that was another really great example of improvising because Susan couldn't, the word boat didn't come to mind, right? And so she said, <laughs> rowing vessel. What a great way to, you know, not panic about the word boat not coming to mind. She came around another way. And that actually was one of the things that I'll probably remember from that scene. It was so memorable and funny because she found another way. And that, that's the exact kind of adaptability and teamwork that we're looking to foster. So you take an example like that, and then you think about, you know, this afternoon, maybe you're having a conversation with someone and you can't think of a word. And instead of getting frustrated, you say, rowing vessel. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Or artichoke. <laughs> or artichoke. Where yeah. did it come from? Yeah. Great example. Okay, let's have two more people do a different memory. So we had we had rowing at the Olympics. Let's have uh, two more folks who want to come up in front of everyone and play the best friend game, creating a memory right in front of our very eyes. Uh, and you saw how Greg Richard, uh, how great Greg and Susan did. So let's see who wants to try as well. Anyone put their hand up to try this out, the best friend game? I have to go to my two screens here. Okay, we've got Anne. So I'm gonna we're gonna uh, highlight Ann Picker, and we've got one more person with their hand up. Someone want to go? Stacy's gonna go. Okay, great. Stacy, I think that was a hand. It was kind of like a mysterious, like oh, maybe. <laughs> it was kind of maybe. <laughs> Nobody else will. <laughs> we'll take you. Yes. Okay. Hi, so. Anne. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I can only see myself. Oh, I'm fine. in New Jersey. <laughs> I know, but where are you on the screen? Like an echo. Uh, there you are. There I am. Lovely. <laughs> okay, so Stacy's going to start out. She's going to say, Anne, do you remember when? And then Anne's going to start with that. Yes, yes, yes. And this time, I would like to coach you to give one idea 
So each person just give one idea and have that idea build on what the other person said. Okay, let's okay. see if we can we can uh, create like that. Here we go, Stacy. Uh, let's give them a thunderous applause to start off. In three, <laughs> two, one. Hi, Anne. Do you remember when we graduated from high school? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> I think they'd invented electricity on my part. You were so far behind me. I mean, <laughs> um, oh, but oh, but that's not true, Anne. We graduated in the same class because I was held back five times, and you were. <laughs> well, all right. I I may have been ten years ahead, but still, I mean, um, God, I need to go get my Prevagen. <laughs> Okay, Stacey, get back to the graduation. Go with oh, those five. Okay, guests. okay. So, so, um, yes, 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 yes. And remember when we had to wear those those ugly red colored robes? They were, um... yeah, 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 yeah. They were that. They weren't really red. They were more burgundy with juice stains on them. I think. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But it wasn't juice. It was wine. I think they called it something farm. Yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Somebody substituted the juice with the apple farm wine. That's what it was. Oh, yes. Appleberry farm grape juice. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And what did we, what kind of vessel did we drink them from? It, well, my memory is a bit fuzzy but if I recall um they they looked like um Roman statues and you would drink out of something oh. in their middle yes 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 they were Roman gladiators with you know the middle part as a straw wasn't right. that the case yes 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 and and it was really <laughs> interesting seeing everybody sticking Roman concept into the yeah yeah <laughs> yes yeah. yes 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 those those Roman straws were quite nice and big. <laughs> okay, let's think? end it there. Give them a <laughs> round of applause. That was so good. Sorry, we went a little off piste. <laughs> well, you know what? I want to I want to actually use that as a learning moment because I thought you got there at the end. And what changed was at the very beginning, did you notice they said, yes, 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 but. Yes, 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 but you didn't have electricity. Yes, 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 but I graduated 10 years before you. And so I gave the little coaching to say, say and. And when they said and instead of but, they got on the same page. And it was like they had known each other for 20 years, wasn't it? It was just so delightful and they started working together. So this often happens in collaboration where we try to control what's happening instead of accept what's happening. And we saw real live, in, in live time here, the difference when the, these two connected with the, with the yes and, and then it was like they had known each other forever and we had this hilarious thing about the juice that was the wine served in the Roman... Roman torso, you know, and, <laughs> and that image there. So really good job. Thank you, volunteers. Thank you, Anne, and thank you, Stacy. And, and, you know, I want everyone to think about how do you feel right now? You know, watching that collaboration, that wasn't a script, that wasn't a play that they performed, that was improv. They created that in front of our very eyes. I feel really engaged. I feel really excited, you know, and that comes from creating in the present moment. That's where this joy comes from. And so when we do this kind of thing and then get good at it, you know, maybe next week we're on again and Anne and I do a, a scene where we call back the Roman statue wine glasses, right? And then we laugh at that. Then you really start to get everyone's sense of humor and really have a ball when you're improvising with them. Great job, great job for our volunteers. Uh, Susan. Dan, I thought it was really interesting how many different ways we said, yes, you guys, us guys, and those guys. Two to yeah. five times. Saying yeah, 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 or yep, 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 yep. People yeah. made it, people started to make it their own. You know, the characters that they were playing, 
started to say yes in a different way. And we saw Anne say, yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> and we saw, we saw that in, in each pair. And I think it was wonderful. All right. That's the way it evolves. Sometimes we play these improv games for years and then two people play it and they do something that I've never seen before. And I think, oh, that was great. That's how I'm going to introduce it from now on. You know, <laughs> there's no way to break these games. They're always kind of evolving. And that's a great example of it. You know, that that acceptance and that yes, it can change. Right. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes it more natural. Yeah. Good observation. Thanks, Susan, for that. Okay, Rosemary's back. Her Zoom crashed, but she's back. <laughs> Celebrate mistakes. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> yep, I'm back. And it looks like we have a we have a little bit more time here, so we might we might want to go into some talking a little bit about what's going on with improv for Parkinson's. Unless we want to do one more round. One more couple more slides and then we can have time for questions and if there aren't any questions we could even uh maybe get in one more game in here so um do you want to put the slides back up there rosemary and we'll mm -hmm. talk about what's next with our program i know many of you here are thinking okay i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try improv for parkinson's see how i like it uh, you can try it with tightrope you there's a great teacher in naples florida named margo escott who does improv for wellness there's robert who does yes and exercise and there's us tightrope uh, we are a non-for-profit we're becoming a non-for-profit and that's our focus actually for this month and we've partnered with parkinson's canada and we have previously partnered and still partner with Parkinson's BC, with Parkinson's Society of British Columbia. And the great thing is we're offering this program at no cost to participants. So because of their generous partnership, you just have to sign up and then you get to come for the six weeks without any, um, without any cost. We accept donations, but there's no cost to participate now in these programs. And we're figuring out our dates. So if you'd like to get on the list to get into the class, we do a maximum. How many students do we take in each class, Rosemary? Usually about 12 to 14 is our maximum. As long as we have uh, um, our assistant teacher, usually someone from our PD performance troop, then we can go to 14. Yeah. Okay. So the classes are pretty small. You get to know everybody. You get to know their sense of humor like we just saw in our last pair. And uh, if you're interested in signing up for that, you can either follow our website for when we announce the dates, or if you send Rosemary an email, and we'll make these slides available to after the presentation, uh, you can get on our waiting list, and then we'll send you out uh, an email to sign up for the classes and have a ch chance to sign up first. Great. Yeah, that's right. And uh, just so you know, with our par partnership with Parkinson Canada, if you're in the States or you're elsewhere, you're not in Canada, you're still more than welcome to join us. That's a great thing about Zoom. Just so you, you know. do. Yeah, yeah, great thing about Zoom. It's connected us all. Just like here today, you know, we're not all together in person, but we're together on Zoom and in spirit. Okay, so some testimonials and if anyone has any questions we'll take them now here's one of our favorite quotes and i know robert has heard this too from his yes and exercise drop-in classes it's the one time each week where i don't have parkinson's you know we talk about the symptoms of pd and the ability you know let's say you have a tremor and your tremor is acting up one day you decide whether the audience sees that tremor and we had one performance uh where one of our uh, our actors played a waiter and he said, I'm the best waiter at sprinkling salt on the on the dish. With <laughs> like some salt on your dish, it's my favorite thing to do, right? So he used the tremor. Or we have had other performances where people have been experiencing the tremor or dystonia or, or dyskinesia, and they don't mention it at all. And then we don't see it. You know, the character is, is what they say and how they present themselves, and we look through it. And that can be really empowering. So this idea of, you know, you choose what the audience sees. Um, closing up is something that Parkinson's does to us. So anything to open us up is important. Also on our website, we've got all kinds of interviews and podcasts and, uh, and features that we've done in this work, in this improv for Parkinson's work. So if anyone has any questions now, you can put up your hand and, uh, and ask away and, uh, or you can type it into the chat. 
and we'll answer in the chat. We'll give a couple moments for questions here. And uh, if we have some time, maybe we'll fit in one more game. Open up the floor. Greg, I had seen your hand up, but then it went down. Did you have a question? Are you good? Nope. Okay. I saw your hand go up. He's still trying to get to Paris for the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thumbing a ride. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Thanks for your question, Joy. Joy asks, are the classes offered via Zoom? Yes, they are on Zoom. Exactly like you're joining on here. We send a link to the people who are registered for the class and they join on Zoom. We are also getting some in-person classes going here in Vancouver. So you can keep in touch um, for those in-person classes as well. We had our... Parkinson's performance troupe come to a show at our theater here in Vancouver. Clara was there. And after the show, we all got up on stage and did a jam. And it was one of my favorite memories, I think, from 2023. It was such a special mm -hmm. night. The last thing I want to talk about, too, is that we have this performance troupe. So I mentioned that Alona and Clara are part of our performance troupe. And I know that Stacy and uh, Susan are part of uh, the Yes and exercise uh, with Robert, and they've performed with our troupe as well. And the troupe is a group of folks who all have a movement disorder or PD, and they want to be improvisers. So moving beyond just using improv for PD, but now becoming an improviser and doing shows. And we have showcases every season. We do two shows. The last one we did was a film noir show in December. It was so much fun. And uh, that troupe will be starting again this month and we'll have showcases. So if you want to just watch some improv, you know, the feeling of watching people create in front of your eyes is also thrilling. So you can watch our website for when those showcases happen too. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any more questions, so I think we can fit in one more game. This is our favorite game to end our shows. It's called Parkinson's With Me Is Like. And I'm going to give you a quick tune, tune in to this game, and then we'll open mm -hmm. it up. Uh, this should should end our, our series today, our, our workshop on a, on a good laugh. So we're going to get a suggestion of an object or an activity. And then you're going to create a joke that likens that object or activity to life with PD or a movement disorder. So what you wanna do is start to think about the aspects of that suggestion. So if I was going to get the suggestion and I have a great app on my phone that gives me suggestions. So it just gives me <laughs> broccoli, broccoli. So if I was gonna say broccoli, what I would start to do is think about, well, what do I know about broccoli? I know that it's green. It comes in a bunch. We might call it a stock. The price of it has raised. It doesn't always smell that great. I know kids don't love it. I know it's good for you. I know it has iron in it. I know you get it at the grocery store, right? So these are all the, the expectations or the possibilities about broccoli. And then I could think about, well, what do any of those things have in common with a movement disorder or PD? Right. So I could think about, OK, so it's green. You know, is anything does anything uh, ring a bell for me about PD or movement disorder that is green? You know, maybe maybe a pill is green or maybe there's a joke or a play on words I can make with green. Or maybe I could use the word bunch, you know, like. PD with me is like broccoli, you know, it's a bunch of problems. <laughs> <laughs> something like this you know okay so okay so let's get a new suggestion and we'll open it up to anyone who has a joke on this one so <laughs> okay pregnancy test <laughs> pregnancy test okay so parkinson's or movement disorder is like a pregnancy test and if you've got a joke you can either put it in the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, and let us have it. Who's got one for pregnancy tests? <laughs> Eden has a great one. 
PD with me is like a pregnancy test. Sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's not. <laughs> Anyone else got one? Add, but it lasts, lasts a lifetime. <laughs> the results last a lifetime. <laughs> That's a good one, Greg. Who, who else has got one for pregnancy test? How about PD is like a pregnancy test? At first, you may feel like hiding the results. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How about PD is like a pregnancy test. Sometimes you want to piss on it. <laughs> Clara, you got one? I forgot. I already now forgot it. PD. Um, Parkinson, uh, Parkinson's like a pregnancy test. You, um, you always have to look at it and make sure it's there. Um, what was it? I forgot it. Sorry. Katie's got a good one. PD is like a pregnancy test. Both can stop you in your tracks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the last suggestion now. Wrestling. PD is like wrestling. Or movement disorder is like wrestling. Why is it like wrestling? Anyone got one? Yeah, Clara. PD is like wrestling. It always ends up on top. <sighs> Anyone else got one for wrestling? Greg, you got one? PD is like wrestling in that you wear tights, but you have to grapple with it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Any more for wrestling? But PD is like wrestling. Sometimes it gets you in a headlock. <laughs> Here's one from Kathleen. Uh, PD is like wrestling. You're not always sure where your arms and legs will end up. <laughs> That's a great one. That's a great one to end on. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I hope this brightened your day. I hope you can take something around this idea of using improv skills to help navigate life and put it into practice this afternoon. Maybe it's about um, going with the flow, not judging your ideas or saying yes and. We wish you the best in 2024. Thank you so much to the PMD Alliance for having us here as our Thank as you. guests today. And Thank uh, you hope everyone has a great year Thank and you. stay in touch. I do encourage everyone to save their chat. Um, both Kelly and Rosemary put some good links in the chat so you can follow up with them. This is a free program. We really encourage everyone to uh, sign up for it. So if you save your chat, if your chat is open, there's three dots on the bottom you can click on to save your chat. And this way you'll keep the links and everything for Tightrope Theater. Thank you, everybody. We're glad you spent this afternoon. I personally feel elated right now. So thank you both for this. Have a thank great day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.